It's meant to imitate a school of fish. <laughs> so we're going to go after the big predators here. There we go. Good sized one. That's what we want. A nice two pounder, three pounder. Oh. That is a good sized one. That's perfect. Look at the colors on that guy. That's a beaut. That's exactly what we want for our pond. Maybe a little bit smaller than that, but that's exactly what we're looking for. Look at the colors on that thing. What a beautiful fish. So those are the fish that we're gonna be getting in our pond. You can see they've been all been handled well. I'm gonna say that again. Right. I say not an awesome fisherman or what? I said this guy is just fantastic. Look, the fish just come to him. This environment is, uh, is to help you be successful, but it's definitely all in the fish whispering skills that you've acquired. It's perfect place to bring uh, kids, yeah. I would say. And, yeah. and adults too, if you want fresh fish. Yeah, what we've actually started doing is we have a fly fishing side that's starting out. So people that do fly fishing, but the season hasn't opened yet, or they're trying to get some rust off the skill set. It's uh, we're gonna start some evenings ups and stuff like that, but our social media will have that stuff on there. But yeah, I lots of first time fishers and, uh, and people that just want to catch something for supper that's fresh and have some fun doing it. We got her bled out and uh, I've talked Clark into lending uh, his services. So he's gonna show us the best way to actually clean this fish out, get rid of the pin bones. So he's got a, actually a cleaning station set up here so you can have your fish clean, so you can be uh, fish in hand, ready to cook as soon as you get home. So you can buy fish ready-made. There's a trout viewing wind or, uh, aquarium. You can pick the fish that you want specifically, or you can obviously have fun and uh, catch your own. And you can catch as many as you want. Trust me, there's a ton of fish in there too. And uh, for kids, adults, you guys are getting into fishing. You don't want to be messing around with boats kids fishing line all the whole works you guys know what goes into it come out here and uh, give it a go easy to drive up they've got nice places to set up you've got picnic tables obviously we're pre-season here not everything's ready to go just yet but by the time you get here they will so look for the trout opener come out to Linden's uh, link will be down below all that information you can hear the fish just jumping behind me we'll get our fish on the trailer and we're gonna head out so we gotta grab one of these totes here these are uh, portable totes, obviously, so if you do uh, smaller orders like we're doing, then we can just store it on the trailer here. It'll come with an aerator. We'll drive it all the way back to the pond, and then we can drop the tote off when we're done. We're hands-on people, and uh, we like to see exactly where our fish comes from and do like from start to finish. So I've, I've in the past watched them uh, even milk the fish and get the eggs out of the fish, which is a pretty neat process. So, yeah. you, so you deliver, but you can't pick your own fish. Yeah, up. so so what we offer is we offer delivery services, but there is order minimums for that. Yep. Um, but we do offer the option of people picking it up and then they just rent this tote yep. and oxygen and then they can take care of distribution as they see fit and we just need it back by the next day. So it gives a lot more flexibility for the for the customer to be able to do it on their own time and make sure that there's people there for when they're stocking their pond. Sometimes it's a bit of a family event. Yep. And so we want to allow that to happen. But when we're delivering, we typically have multiple routes to try and make it cost effective. Gotcha. So um, that just takes away the uh, relational aspect of the stocking. So you want like thousand fish orders? Yeah, it's uh, to, 700. To go, yeah. to go a good distance, right? Yeah, like we do, we have orders for Something four or like five thousand fish up sure. to Bancroft or we yeah. have, but we try and make sure it just logistics is so expensive and we try and add value to the customers and often it makes the most sense for them to do it as a pickup instead of as a delivery for sure so. yeah because if we're, we're talking about a couple hundred fish or something yeah less than that so it's a small order yeah compared to what you're able to do yeah yeah right on cool i'm thinking we need so we need something like this automatic fish feeder uh, looks like i asked clark and he says it goes off every hour so it looks like it's a, well, it's actually an aquatic extreme fish feeder. I thought maybe it was like a deer feeder modified, but it's a, basically a hopper system, solar powered. And then every hour it's gonna shoot feed out into the pond. So that takes care of one variable of like having to go out every time and feed your fish. I don't think we need to fish or fi feed our fish every hour, but you know, twice a day or something like that would be a pretty good compromise. That's pretty neat. So you know that most of the fish are gonna be hanging out here looking for feed and then cruising the rest of it for natural feed as well, whatever they can supplement. 
typically you want to enjoy the angling experience with your family as well. So you're eating the fish that you with, caught. With kids? With kids. So that's a, <laughs> that's a huge part of it is the presentation side of a whole fish obviously is not typically is not quite as desirable oh, come in, our, on. in our culture. I want to see the head and the, the face and everything. I want to know what I'm eating. But we can impose our views on that's, others. That's true. That's true. So uh, <laughs> as a general rule, we uh, we find that the people prefer to have that they come from a grocery store yeah. um, expectation. So they're wanting to have a boneless fillet that's yeah. ready to cook and eat. That's key for sure. And uh, so getting rid of the bones is, is essential from a health perspective as far as the safety of your kids but also um, it's just easier to manage so I'll show you how we do that um, there's two ways to get the pin bones out one is that you can pull them out by hand with a pair of tweezers because um, there's probably about 180 of them but uh, or you can cut them out basically you have your ribs but there's a pin bone line which is generally along the lateral line so this line on the fish here is actually like it's sensory so it like it feels everything through there. That's where all of its senses come through is this lateral line here. And then the pin bones are just above that. Okay. And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right behind the head here to have as little loss as possible. Is the meat actually comes up right behind the, the head here, right behind the gill, the gill plates, the opercular plates. Yep. So we're trying to cut in basically on a V. So I'm gonna make that first cut initially. Make sure you have full control over the fish. So you'll see that you've gone right under this, this pectoral fin. You're good there. Now what I'm doing now is I'm going basically right along the spine, but just on this side of the spine. So I wanna be on this side of the spine, but I'm right up against it. And I'm pointing that knife down a little bit so that it's right, it's cutting right along. So that's the spine there. So you know that you're not missing any of that meat. Now that you're at this stage, you're going down until you feel the pin bones. You're gonna just cut through them. So this is the row of pin bones here. That little white line there, those are actually pin bones. Yeah. Right there? Yep. Okay. Then you're gonna just follow the rib cage down. So your, my knife is on a little bit of an angle, so it just stays right up against those ribs, but I don't want it on such an aggressive angle that it'll actually cut through them. So those rib bones are a little bit more significant. So that's what you'll get on one side, and then I just flip the fish over and just repeat that process on the other. I typically keep that structure there or that meat there just so that we can still have the contour of the fish the same. You just go on this side of the spine again. And don't be too hard on yourself when you're just learning how to do this. I haven't done this for a number of months now because it's just a spring. So I did miss this meat here, but it's a, it's a learning process. So there's bones at the ends of the end of there. So you'll just get underneath it first and then follow it along the, the bone structure. Then you can either cook it this way or you can cut it down the middle. Then you're good there. Nice. So what we're gonna do now if you're ever trying to find the pin bones, you just run your knife along there and you can probably see the flesh reacting where it's those pin bones are are becoming a little bit more exposed. So is that so that's what you would use the pliers and pull them out? That's correct. But you won't won't work with your fingers, huh? Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> not even not even Chris's massive grip strength Vice to take grips? care of those. Um, oh no. Nope. It gives you more control if you can just do one at a time. Um, but if you want to, basically you're trying to minimize your loss, right? So I'm gonna just go right alongside. So basically I have a full cut all the way down to the skin. You can see I've actually gone through the skin on the one side. You preferably don't do that just cause then you're gonna have strips of meat, which is not as easy to manage. And you can just kind of lift out what, what has been cut away. So I can leave one for you guys to do with the tweezers if you'd like, or I can cut them both out. Take them out. Alrighty. I got the idea. There we go, we got lunch all taken care of. I just talked to Clark and he said the pin bone operation is something you're gonna have to handle yourself. He will typically gut and uh, bag the fish so you're ready to go. 
take it home. The other stuff is requires special permit because you're in your fish pr processing, which is a whole no another ball of wax. You learn the ins and outs of operating a fish hatchery when you come here and you make friends with Clark. But uh, you guys can make friends with Clark too. Come out down here, say hi, let him know that you saw uh, us, him, on the Wood of Beardsman channel or Modern Soft Reliance and uh, maybe he'll give you a special smile. <laughs> no special treatment, but a special smile. And uh, like I say, it's really nice to have the kids come out here. So take advantage of it. All right, let's load up the fish now. We've got our food loaded up. This is gonna be for lunch. Get an idea of the scale and the size of this. This is a, this is I don't know if this is a 10 pounder, but it looks to me about a 10 pounder. Look at my hand, you the size of it. Like the eye is the size of my thumb. It's absolutely <laughs> massive. And so this is going to be lowest. This is going to be lowest lay, lay loose lowest, loose lowest. We're going to get Clark spent and loose lowest. Oh my gosh! All right, Lois, come on with me. Loose Lois in the drink. Oh, oh jeepers. <laughs> Successfully launched. She's okay. Bubba Gump Trout. Uh oh, that's such a turn We gotta get her upright. This is how we do it? Yep. There you go. What you got in there? Mail? Oh, the mail? That's significantly smaller, isn't it? Yeah. You lift her up? Or about half the, half the size? No, not quite half the size, eh? So yeah. that's Clark Spent version two. Clark yep. Spent two? 2.0. Clock spent two. Loose lowest number version one. Number version. There we go. Yes. So the running gag last uh, was it two years ago? Me maybe yeah, three two years, years ago. I think yeah. you're one of the longest running sponsors we have on the channel. So that's pretty go. positive. But uh, we picked up a spawning male, and this is Clark. Yeah. And so we called it uh, Clark spent because it's a spent fish. Yep. Right. So after they're all done, they usually go to the pond, right? Yep. Yep. So in this case, we've got uh, the version number two. So we've got Clark spent two. Yep. So we're gonna track him. We're gonna monitor him, see how he does that. Last one we had was a bit of an adventure. We ended up eating Clark spent before it was time was up. I felt anyway. So this time we've got a uh, female. So it's gonna be loose Lois. So we've got Clark spent two and loose Lois. We're gonna track their adventure. That That is a massive fish. What do you figure that fish weighs? That's probably around 15 pounds. It's a 15 pounder. Yeah, so it's probably around four years old. It's just been waiting its whole life for this time, for a time <laughs> such as this. To be free? To, to, to start a family <laughs> in a tranquil lakeside chalet resort that well, you guys have created. We've got a beautiful spot for her. That's true. Do you want to put a wager down on if she's going to adapt well to the surroundings? Because she's been pretty much as a, you know, a breeding specimen up until now. Yeah. Princess not having to do too much work. It's true. Kind of just, you know, making eggs. Yeah, I'll give her a 70%. 70% chance yeah. of survival till the fall, because yeah. that's what we're aiming for. Yeah. And then we're gonna have a delicious dinner of 15 pounds of rainbow trout. That's cl that's crazy. That thing's massive. Yeah. I've never seen a fish that big. Yeah, no, they're, like, they're As far simple. as like a, like a rainbow, that's, that's gotta be trophy size, right? Well, it would be, especially in the wild, but what we have here is an ideal environment, right? We want all their energy to be focused on the healthiest fish possible, and so, yeah. Um, so they're in ideal setting. So yeah, they get pretty big here. That's that's a lot of fish, man. Yeah. I can't wait to try to catch it. I might not be able to. I don't know. It's gonna be a struggle. We'll have to see. Put your the, scuba the gear 20 on. Pound, yeah, I might have to go uh, spearfish that sucker. <laughs> anyway, that's awesome. All right, let's get the rest of our fish. Sounds good. So we're trying to sort out how many fish we want for numbers wise and everything like that. So we've got like quite a few decent bigger size runs ready to harvest by fall. We're not gonna overwinter these fish. So the rest of our fish now are going to be uh, on the smaller size. So you can get five inch fish, six inch fish. You can get two pounders. He'll, he'll, he'll sell you the 10 pounders if you want, I think too. So the rest are going to be on the smaller side, the six inch to, uh, to uh, 18 inch or so mixed bag.
Holy smokes, we got some fish in the pond. Ready for the pond. Here's last scoop. That's an absolute, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a bath. That's an absolute mess of fish. I don't know what the official count is. We have no idea what the official count is. We're just going by scoops. We've got lots of scoops, maybe four or five scoops, plus some big scoops. So um, now we're a bit on the clock here. We've got lots of oxygen. So we're just going to ratchet strap this down there and we'll meet you down at the pond. Hold up, hold up. It's always a little harrowing. Well, last time we had to hoof them from the top of the hill, so we got smarter this time. We got the trailer right to the mouth of the water. Um, it's always interesting, well, nervous, worrying to find out if your trout made it and they're alive. So we didn't want to spend any time stopping and checking because there's really not much we could do about it anyway. But uh, we're, we're in good hands with Clark system. He's got a good sized aerator. I don't know if you guys noticed the big aerator going on top. So that's pumping oxygen constantly into the system. Um, hoping that obviously our big, big trout, our massive trout, Clark spent two and Lo loose Lois. I don't know if you know that, but that's a uh, Clark spent is obviously a Clark Kent joke from Superman. If you guys didn't clue on on that. So here's the big reveal. Get that lid off of. Hopefully, we got no floaters, but it's just a short ride from here into the pond. Which way are you going? This way. Which way? This way. <laughs> I don't know which way this way is. We've got lots of bubbles, and uh, there are absolutely no fish hanging out on the top, which is beautiful. So, I know you guys can't see anything, but as long as there's no belly up fish. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the big one. That's Loose Lois, I think, came up for the surface. We didn't get a good look at uh, Clark Spent. So we'll weed through these fish and try to find the a massive male. We have a net here, so we'll fish these out. Haha, <laughs> fish. It's not even a joke. It's just what we're gonna do. So maybe uh, Kevin can go up top here and I'll go down below to try to find uh, Clark Spent. We want to have a good look at Clark Spent before. We got a good look at Lois, Loose Lois already. Now we got to find the big male. All right, well, we got to get Lo Loose Lois out first, I think. Okay. Loose Lois got to go first. I don't think you're going to fit it in there. <laughs> this is a small net for Lois. Come on, Lois. <laughs> She's going to freak out. Dude. Oh, she barely fits in the net. Okay. In. Let's go. Come on, Lois. Into your new home. Oof. Okay. Go. Be free. Holy smokes. That's a big fish. <laughs> I hope you guys can see her swim off. Where's she going to go? Sit on the bottom? She's never had this much room in her whole life. Is she going to go right to the trout jam? Let's see. Is she going to the trout jam? She's just sitting right there on the bottom there so far. There she is. I don't know if you can see her. That dark blob. But we got the aerator situated perfectly. I, I imagine she's going to go right. She's headed right to the trout jam. She disappeared. She's gone now. You can't see her anymore. Well, I hope that's not the last we see of her. <laughs> She like completely vanished into the bottom. Clark spent two, so yeah, not the biggest one. Well, if you find the biggest one, that's fine too. But I want to, I want to look, have a look at him first. We didn't, we didn't get to look at Clark spent two yet. We might never see him again. If we see him, we see him. Whoops! That guy went for a. Okay, so these are all medium-sized ones. We'll say there's no Clark spent in there. Those are medium large. That guy's pretty big. But I don't think he's a massive one. There's some bigger ones there. There's another big female it looks like. Oh, look at them. They got some spunk. These guys are just drifting off into the sunset. 
That guy's like, what's going on? I got so much room. How many fish was that? We should count. Oh. Was that four? Uh, more than four. That's probably six. Okay, let's say let's say that's five. We'll split the difference. We got five. We have six so far. There's two big ones on there. So let's say six. We'll say six. We should get an official count. <laughs> six. Here, come and help me. Oh, I can't count. Six. The video replay, seven. Eight. Nine. Come on. Ten. Eleven. There's a big one. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. And one more. Seventeen. Good mixed bag. Small ones and big ones. Okay, good. Well, don't get them yet. We'll have a look at them. That, I think that's, that's Clark Spent. Okay, Clark Spent's in there, guys. What are we up to? What was the count? 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21. Trying to keep Clark Spent. 20, oh, Clark Spent's gonna go. 22, 22. There, here Clark Spent's gonna go. There's, there's Clark Spent. Holy smokes, that's a big fish. Okay, 23, 24, 25, 26. Oh, 27. Oof, couple big ones here. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. We're getting a rough count. It's okay. Oh my. Holy. Oh. 47, 8, 9, other way, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, roughly. Holy, look at these trophy trout. We're up to 58, 59. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. Whoo-wee, 69 so far. Was, uh, we're gonna say that was five. <laughs> we're gonna say 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. They like to swim back on the net. I don't know why. 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 97. If anything, we're undercounting these, I think. 97. 97, 98, 99. Got, uh, call that 100. Three. Three. Okay, so that's 104. Whew, there they go. Oh, 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 oh. That's uh, loose Lois. Pretty sure. Okay, there's three left here. A couple more left. Kevin said, so we'll say it's about 110. 110 fishes. Well, I can see them happily swimming around. They're still schooling, which is pretty typical for hatchery fish. Eventually they'll stop schooling and I think they'll make use of the habitat we have put in there. I am curious to see how long they're gonna, it's gonna take them to take to the trout jam so on the next video, I might throw the kayak in there and the submerged camera and then have a look so you guys can see 
if they're starting to settle in. Um, obviously, we'd like them to not be swimming around in circles, which they're not doing. I can see Lo laying Lois right here. She's just cruising around nice and slow. And it'll be interesting to see how she takes to the pond as well as uh, Clark spent too. But they should be nice and healthy. There's good habitat here. We've got lots of oxygen. The brand new aerator from Condors is really fired up. And then we even got the windmill going every once in a while. Kevin and I decided we cut a couple more trees to get a little bit more airflow. We can lose one of those cedar trees because it's a pear tree anyway. So we don't need to have uh, two trees clumped together. It's not good. It's not healthy for the trees either. But uh, it should be interesting to see. You guys keep following along on the series. And uh, we do have that trout to eat, but I think we'll eat it on the next episode. I think that was enough excitement for me.